And a new study shows just how dangerous using e-cigarettes can be. We'll talk with a doctor about this growing trend and what can be done about it. A new study out shows electronic cigarette users have a greater lung inflammation than cigarette smokers and non-smokers. That study published online in the Journal of Nuclear Medicine. This study is the first to provide evidence that vaping e-liquids with e-cigarettes creates a unique inflammatory response in the lungs that is different from cigarette smoking. Smoking sounds dangerous. So let's talk a little bit more about this. Joining us to discuss this is Dr. Jacob Dubroff, a nuclear medicine physician at the University of Pennsylvania, also a lead researcher on this study. Thanks for being here tonight. Great to be with you, Tisha. All right, let's get started. Can you first and foremost elaborate a little bit more on what your study found? So we found that the that inflammation in the lungs of, of younger individuals, 27, 28 year olds who vape nicotine uh, is a little bit higher and it looks like a different type of process than in combustible cigarette users. And uh, so basically that it's a different beast altogether in what's happening inside your body in terms of inflammation. You know, it sounds like it. What have you uncovered in this study specifically that others have either not examined or found before now? So we so inflammation is a very difficult thing to uh, detect, especially early in the lungs. We have ways to do it in your body, different blood markers, but to, to actually measure it and compare different groups with different behavior is a unique uh, ability of nuclear medicine molecular imaging PET. So nuclear medicine PET is able to do this in which other imaging modalities and other tests can't really see these differences because of how we use our tests and the type of tests um, that we have. How big of an issue is the e-cigarette problem among young people? So that's exactly what led us to this study. Even before uh, the pandemic, it's been hard to measure behaviors during the pandemic, but there were studies published showing up to 40% of all uh, high school seniors had been using e-cigarettes and 25% uh, uh, were using it at least um, uh, once a month, uh, if not greater. And so that and that trend was growing. And so we are concerned that uh, more people, more younger people are using e-cigarettes. And we don't know what that means. More inflammation, uh, as we've shown using nuclear medicine PET, uh, could be long term, very bad side effects, uh, different types of disease. We're not sure what that means because we don't have the years out from this behavior to really figure it out like we know with traditional combustible cigarettes. You know, you bring up a good point. There's also been growing concern about children using these electronic cigarettes, but your study doesn't focus solely on children. What can adults take away from what you've learned? Well, adults can take away that it's probably better not to vape because we don't know what that means for you long term, especially if it means more inflammation um, and, and more inflammation in, in terms of disease. It doesn't necessarily mean you're gonna have a disease, but we know it's the foundation for a lot of different types of diseases, especially in the lung. So if you are vaping, maybe discuss with your doctor uh, about how you can stop vaping, how you can get yourself off of nicotine using the patch and then and, and, and quitting uh, nicotine dependence altogether. Because we don't know what this is gonna mean for your health in, in 10, 15, 20 years down the line. Did you all look into, you mentioned stop vaping. Is it harder to stop vaping than it is to stop smoking? Uh, that has, there's some evidence of that, but that's not really my vein of expertise. Uh, it, it, they both deliver nicotine, which is what your body wants for reward. But in terms of easier to quit one versus the other, people have tried using vape to quit cigarettes but uh, because of the harm uh, that we know in cigarettes, but in terms of vaping versus quitting, no, I, I am not aware and I'm not an expert in how you, how you quit from those two different diseases. Now that we have this information from your study, what's the next step? I think the next step is that nuclear medicine and PET needs to do more research and understanding what this inflammation means, looking at more people with different types of behavior uh, who maybe smoke different things. We just looked at people who use combustible cigarettes. A lot of places in the United States have decriminalized uh, marijuana. I don't know what that means for. We don't know what that means in terms of pulmonary inflammation. Uh, and this technique, the nuclear medicine PET imaging, can help us understand if inflammation may be involved in these behaviors or people who who smoke and vape. 
Um, and so understanding that, understanding how they can stop if that changes or understanding what type of intervention uh, we can do to, to decrease the inflammation, uh, which could set up further disease is also important. So it's just the tip of the iceberg here for a nuclear medicine pet. Dr. Jacob DeBroff with the University of Pennsylvania Medicine. Thank you so much for joining us tonight. Pleasure being here. Thanks so much, Tisha.